Hey there, welcome to my video. Um, I'm going to go over what I think is a decent baseline for Radeon settings and try to give you a bit of an overview of how to optimize this properly and how to implement the different features of this optimally so you have problem-free experience. Okay, so when you're in this program, first thing you want to do is go top right. There's a gear icon there. Click that, that's settings. That's going to bring up a subsection here. Under system, um, you want to go where it says check for updates, set that to manual. Uh, I just want to eliminate every background running task that this program will do. So that's the first thing. Manually check for updates. Okay. Go over to preferences. Right, right here. Now, by default, a lot of this stuff's going to be on, like web browser, advertisements. Uh, a lot of this stuff I turned all of it off except for in-game overlay um, and also interesting like game adjustment tracking and notifications I turned that off but it still does track a bit of the performance and I'll show that show you that in a bit if you want um, under AMD user experience program just turn that off so now basically everything that's a background running task is now disabled so uh, if you want to just real quick if you go to display if you have VRR, make sure it's enabled. Um, go to settings here, you can play around with without any issues. No big deal. Um, okay. Now, uh, let's go to gaming. So in gaming, um, you're able to adjust the games individually, but you also have graphics. This, um, this subheading here, graphics. Now what this is, is this basically, I don't know why they called it graphics, it should have just been called global settings, because that's what it is. Um, the, all these settings here can be um, enabled or disabled on a per game basis, which is what you should do. Um, sometimes, like for example, advanced fluid motion frames, sometimes that'll actually have some negative sides to it. And if you enable it here, uh, it'll apply to every game you might open a game, and if you're new to this program, if you're new to how this works, you'll be thinking, why does this look like crap? Why is there screen tearing? Well, it's because fluid motion frame is on. So, long story short, under gaming, under graphics, disable all of this stuff. Don't enable this. Um, you're going to do it all on a per game basis. The only thing in this global settings here that I do enable, this is just personal preferences. I set a frame rate target control, so now all my games are capped at 119 frames per second which is just going to limit my power uh, power usage and also take some load off of my cpu um anyways uh this stuff here hyper rx quality hyper x eco these are just preset combinations of these features um so like if you select hyper rx this will be like that give you the most amount of frames so what that's going to do is that's just going to automatically enable fluid motion frames, anti-lag, boost if possible, etc. I don't recommend using this stuff um, because it's going to affect global settings. It's not worth it. What you want to do if you want to, if you're in a game, so let's let's go to games. If you're in a game, say Alan Wake 2, it's pretty hard to run. If I'm in Alan Wake 2 and it's, it's I find it hard to run, what you do is do Alt plus R, and that's going to open Radeon settings to this page, which is your Alan Wake 2 settings profile. Now you can, all of these features like fluid motion frames, anti-lag boost, all that stuff that was on the global settings before that I told you to leave off, now this is where you can enable it, play around. The thing to do though is that when you're in-game, only enable one of these things at a time just to see if it causes any issues. If you come in here and you enable like four or five things and there's an issue, you won't know which one caused it. It's just going to cause you give you a headache. Just do one thing at a time. Um, anyways, the other thing that you can do, which is kind of cool, so like all of these are software enhancements, but you can also, you know, a lot of people like AMD because you can overclock your cards, etc. Um, from the adrenaline software. So on this setting here, if I go to, if I select tune game performance, what this is going to do is that's going to take me over to the performance tab for this one specific game. And now say, say I'm like, you know what, I want, I've played around with the software enough. I want a little bit more performance. 
it's up to clocks on the on the card or whatever you can do that all here for that one specific game um it's something that i really like anyways um yeah uh so on the topic of tuning your card if you go over to performance um under metrics you can do overlay enable overlay and you can also do it'll pop this up and under tracking you can pick what you want to display on that overlay but also you can do game detection for metrics overlay if i click that now that overlay is going to automatically pop up when i'm in game it's kind of cool um but anyways if you go to tuning this is just my recommendations for like setting up your card um problem free and then making one adjustment at a time and if something causes a problem in that way you know what was the cause so what i do recommend you do is go to custom tuning and set your max frequency on your rat on your gpu set your max frequency to stock now that doesn't necessarily mean what your card came with what i mean by stock is if you go to amd's website for your for your specific card so this is mine for 7900 xd if i go to gpu it says right here boost frequency so that's up to 2400 megahertz now this card can go way higher but just hear me out so at 2400 megahertz now if i go down more requirements typical board power 315 so basically what that's telling me is amd is saying at their rated spec of a 2400 boost clock the card will use is rated to use 315 watts of power um these these can go way higher these can these can boost way higher um but like i said what i recommend you do like your card might come overclocked mine did mine came with a base frequency of 2700 megahertz whatever um set it to base and also um watch some guides on how to undervolt um, what I did is I just ran, I ran automatic tuning or an undervolt GPU, which spit out 1050 millivolts. Um, and then what I did is I had a game open and I would just go back and forth between the game and this by using Alt plus R, which would bring this up. And um, I just lowered the millivolts by five millivolts at a time until I thought it was um, showed some signs of being unstable. So. Um, these are my settings for my card. They'll be different for yours. You should maybe watch some guys on that, but long story short, if you're setting up problem free, just set your card max frequency to 2400 to start or set it to set it to your cards recommended or officially supported boost frequency. Just set that. Um, you can look up benchmarks on your on your specific card, and then run those benchmarks and see how your card performs in that way. Once you're happy with that, you can set. You can start to play around with overclocking. But again, if you go to gaming, you go to your specific game, and then you go tune game performance. You can do an overclock on a per game basis, which again, that's what I recommend. Why would you do a global overclock? You don't need to be running you don't need to be you don't need to be in windows running an overclock like why so just go on a per game basis if you really want to um uh yeah honestly that's about it a lot of these features are really cool but a lot of them um in combination and on a per game basis can have a negative effect you have to try them out um a lot of times you won't even need them but they are fun to play around with um, I don't want to make this video too long, but if you have any questions or just let me know, uh, I'm happy to help. And uh, if you were having issues and this helped you out, let me know. So anyways, thanks. Have a good one.